Alright guys, today I want to talk about pushing and holding flanks. Um, it's not easy to do in Battleship these days, but it's it's possible. Uh, if you do the right things and um, more importantly, you have a team that's going to help you with it. So there's a few maps that it's possible to push by yourself, um, especially in a Kerr First or a German Battleship that has Hydro. Um, but for the most part, maps are designed like this, where there's huge open areas that you need to cross, and you can't do that unless you have a team with you. Um, if you're trying to push this all alone, you're just going to die. But since my team is here, we can actually push this, uh, this whole flank. And we actually have to, otherwise we're going to lose this game. Um, since we've given up a lot of control up in the north, and most of our ships are here in the south, we just have to push. So, despite it being not so great that most of their ships are going to be kiting away at long range. That's going to be tough to deal with, and a Shimakaze. Um, but we have Hydro to deal with that, and as you can see, my team is generally pushing with me, which is good. Um, so the most important thing to remember is you need to isolate fights. So you're going to see me throughout this entire video constantly trying to use islands to keep me safe from specific ships. And that's really how you stay alive in a battleship when you're trying to um, when you're trying to push or hold a, hold a giant push back. Um, you can't you just can't tank five ships. That just that's just not a part of this game. You can't do that in a battleship. So in order to stay alive long enough to actually do some meaningful damage, you need to isolate the fights. So here, as you can see, my conquer conquer thunder. Uh, I think they're actually in a div. Um, they, um, they're they kind of pushing, but they're kind of kiting, so it's going to be a little rough for me here for a bit, but we've got some pretty solid islands here that I can use for cover. And, and you, as you'll see, I'm not getting greedy for my back guns in Kerr first. The back guns obviously have a terrible firing angle. Um, if you've ever played the ship, you know. it just it's It's painful to try and get those back turrets off. So I'm not even trying at this point. I'm, I'm just maintaining my angle. I know my health pool is more important right now, and spotting the enemy team is more important right now than um, dealing that little bit of extra damage with my back guns. So the other thing is we're trying to get into secondary range. Um, in a Kerr first, especially, you just you want to be in secondary range. That's where your guns are going to have the most impact as well as, well you're gonna get your secondaries going and these are really good secondaries. You don't need IFHE to pen 32 millimeters with them, so you you kinda of tear up enemy ships when you're in secondary range. As you can see, Smolensk and Des Moines on the flank. Um, that's really bad. So and we're we're kind of fit charging down into like six enemy ships. <laughs> so yeah, it's not you. You you would normally die here. I would normally die here, but there's an island here that I can use. So that Smolensk and Des Moines can't shoot at me when I'm behind this island. I'll be angled to the Yamato, Montana Yamato, um, and that's gonna keep me safe for a reasonably long period of time. I am damage conning that one fire because I know no AG spammer can hit me here. Um, I in fact go so close to this island I can't even shoot for a little bit. Just because this game, I thought, okay, I'm going to try and prioritize my health over dealing maximum damage. So, usually I get pretty greedy about things and try and get my back turrets off and just charge the enemy team kind of without thinking about my health pool to as much. Um, but this this game, I've this game, I uh, thought I'll try I'll try and keep my HP pool for later in the game. As well as still push, and it actually has worked out pretty. It works out pretty well. We've only done 31k damage, but that's okay because we're pushing the flank that we need to push. Um, we do need to kill some more of these ships. We can't just push up to B right now because, well, we die to the crossfire or the we die giving broadside to all these battleships. So we're just gonna nose out here, angle enough to get our secondaries going, but not so much that we just give people broadside. As you can see, it's around that 25 degree angle you want to give in a curve first to get all your secondaries going. Um, they they do have really good firing arcs, those secondaries, so you don't have to give too much broadside. 
And since Kerfirst has the 60mm um, bow plating, the Yamato can actually not overmatch our bow. So this is kind of a bad situation for him to be in. Obviously, I mean, there's a couple of my teammates here finally now coming up to where I'm at. So, but yeah, it's it's nice in a Kerfirst to have that extra bow plating compared to, say, the Ohio when you're fighting ships like Yamato and Shikishima because you can just bow into them and they're going to bounce. Whereas Ohio can possibly get overmatched and Citadel through its bow. So, um, Kerfirst is actually really, really, really tanky when it's angled. Um, its broadside armor is nowhere near some other ships, like Kremlin, for example. But I would argue that this ship is just as tanky as Kremlin is when it's angled. Um, it has the 50mm deck, which Kremlin gets 60, but the only meaningful difference there is really... Um, Hindenburg HE, um, IFHE Henry, and um, the Goliath. Those are really the main ones that um, can full pen Kerr first with HE, at least the deck armor, uh, that won't full pen a Kremlin. So not a huge difference, honestly. So um, it's pretty it's pretty strong. And as you can see, we've we've saved a lot of health. We've dealt 62k, not huge amounts of damage, but it's been enough to push back the enemy team here. And now we're going to try and push in open water. Um, the the play could have been to go through that gap between A and B, um, to turn left here now and go more where that Yoshino is and use islands some more. Um, but I know their Des Moines is low, so he's going to die here soon. And as and their um, Smolensk is going to run out of smoke soon. Um, not like right away, but I know that once he comes out of smoke, I want to be within proximity and spotting distance of him. I want to be able to um, spot him for my team to kill him when he comes out of smoke. And I have enough HP to do that. If I had not hid behind that island earlier, I probably wouldn't have that HP in order to do this kind of pushing play here. So the other thing is, you're going to notice me constantly wiggling. I'll stay angled to all the battleships, right? But going in a straight line makes you an incredibly easy target to hit for anything. Like you saw in that Colbert video that I put up the other day, um, just how easy it is for long, um, long tra shell travel time ships like Colbert to hit battleships when they just go in a straight line. So you're gonna see me kind of wiggle back and forth, not all the time, but enough that people have a tough time getting a bead on me um and that's that can really really help you stay alive a little just that little bit longer as you can see when we're bow in like this to a smolensk he's not going to do that much damage because he's going to be hitting our turrets instead of our superstructure and um it's only when we give him that angle of our superstructure to hit that um that he actually starts really dealing some damage to us so as you can see, we're in Smolensk spotting distance for our team, so... And on top of that, we're just close enough that our guns should be able to clap them pretty good. As well as our secondaries. He starts to deal more damage when we open up, but... It's a risk I need to take because Smolensk is going to melt me pretty quickly. Especially since he's already popped my damage con. Yamato deals pretty good damage, as you can see when you're broadside. Um, you do need to be careful of that. Um, it's pretty negligible damage as soon as you angle, but yeah, when you're broadside, the ship does not... You don't shatter shells like a Kremlin does. Um, you take full pens. You might not get citadeled, but you take some pretty massive full pen damage. We're using Hydro just because the Smolens could have torped. Um, generally, I like to save Hydro for when there's a DD, but of course all their DDs are dead at this point, so we're, we're pretty okay. But... You, you want to save your Hydro for when you know there's probably going to be Torps coming. So sometimes that's the beginning of the game when you start pushing, but other times it's after a Torpedo spread has passed you already. I see a lot of people do this where they a Torpedo spread passes them from like a Shimakaze, let's say, and they ate one Torp, and then they pop Hydro right away. And that's not good because you're wasting your Hydro. Um, his reload time is around two minutes in a Shima. You know, gearing is somewhere in that minute and a half or a little less. You know, so you have time between the next this torpedo salvo that just passed you and the next one. So why would you waste half of your hydro 
on time when that other ship is just going to be reloading, right? So that's where I usually kind of make a mental note of the timer up in the top right corner, what time it is in the match. And then from that, I think, okay, a minute from now I'm going to pop my Hydro. And then I try to look at a minute later and pop the Hydro. And that way you're not wasting your Hydro on time when you know there's not going to be any Torps. Um, of course, that's different for when there's uh, when there's multiple DDs, but we did end up winning that Kerr first game. I thought that was a pretty solid push. Um, I didn't do the most damage, but I did stay alive, and that's kind of the key when you're trying to push with your team. Um, you soak up damage, you stay alive, you spot for your team, all that good stuff. So now we're going to get into holding a flank. Um, this one did not go well for our team, as you can see. We're down like five ships or something like that, and um, they're just gonna charge up at us. So here I wanted to make note that I'm not charging into them. Um, so you gotta know when not to charge <laughs> in these secondary battleships. Uh, the Ohio is pretty good as far as the tank goes um, at long range because it has a Montana hull, and that is incredibly strong. Montana hull is super duper strong. So, when angled, we know we're not going to take much damage, if any at all, from AP. So they have to shoot a high explosive at me. So, eventually they're going to start doing that, and I'm going to have to get behind this island. So again, when you're trying to hold off and fight multiple enemies by yourself, or, you know, with a couple of people, but you're heavily outnumbered, the goal is always to make sure you're not fighting everyone at once. Here I'm trying to soak up damage since I'm a little bit, um, I'm healthy still. So I'm backing up to see if I can take some heat from, say, my Petro Pavlovsk in the middle. Um, we need him to survive as long as we possibly can. And we back out into Holland Torps. <laughs> so it's unfortunate, but we're going to take probably quite a bit of pain from this Holland since uh, I don't think my carrier is particularly interested. Actually, we didn't eat these ones. Later on, you'll see we take some pain from the Holland. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, our carrier doesn't go after him. Our My friendly Holland doesn't really do much to stop him from pushing. Um, and as you can see, I haven't really done much damage to these Nevskis. Um, that's because they're kind of the new car of the month. Um, <laughs> you, it's almost like you're not allowed to deal too much damage to the fresh new Russian ship. <laughs> Um, unless you're at close, close, close range. So, we're taking some HE pressure here. Um, we used our damage control, so I'm going to get behind this island. And since Nevsky has such good shell arcs, I can use even these small islands just to get over, just to get cover from all that HE. So, I know that the, all those guys are going to be pushing super hard. My Petro Pavlos is dead at this point, um, so there's no not much point in me trying to tank for him. Um... So now we're just trying to stop them from taking B. We see the carrier, and you know, I'm hopeful for I'm hopeful for dev strikes on carriers. I know they don't really happen that much. As you can see, the Holland is going to have free reign on me up here. Um, I don't know. Our carrier decides not to go after him, <laughs> which is a little weird to me. I know it's a Richtofen with AP rockets, but still, it seems a little odd to give a DD an entire flank for free. Um, but. I mean, that's carrier players for you. They probably don't have the best game sense. Um, as you can see, we've almost actually got the midway, and that's that's going to be nice because when you're trying to use islands as cover from enemy ships, you're pretty stationary, and that means you're a really easy target for the aircraft carrier. So I wouldn't recommend necessarily doing these plays that I've made in this video if there's a CD in the game, um, especially one with AP bombs. That will really really hurt you um i think the best way to play in a cv game is in a way that you can kite away from the the um the planes and angle to them you want to always be moving when you're in a cv game because if you turn it puts it throws off his aim enough that for the most part you're not going to take too much damage you're hopefully not going to get death struck you know by ap bombs let's say um, unfortunately, I'm against Nevskis and Petropavlovsks in this one, so it's really hard to deal damage to these new Russian ships. I don't, I don't know what Wargaming did to them, but 
Um, they can, they seem to be able to, at least the Petro Pavlos can go broadside and not take damage. I don't know what happened, but it, I mean, it takes a bit of damage when you overmatch it, but... Unfortunately, I drive into these torpedoes. Um, I was thinking that he had torped more to where I was, but um, that's not the case. <laughs> and we're eating some gearing torpedoes too, for good measure, so... I mean, this game's over, but this is just a good example of how you can kind of hold a flank. And if you force them to push into you, well... Yeah, light cruisers will die at that range. <laughs> For the most part. I mean, obviously there's exceptions where RNG says no, but for the most part, you can count on count on these ships dying. Um, I shouldn't have my secondaries on this Nevsky because my main guns are going to kill him. Um, I should have them on the Holland at this point, because I need him dead. As you can see, my front guns were enough. So, we get Confederate, high caliber, a couple devastate like a devastating strike, so pretty solid. Um, and we actually end up dodging their torpedoes at close range. So, this is an important thing here. If I'm to stay alive here, I need to kill this Holland, which means I need to get my secondaries on him a little bit, and I need to somewhat be mindful of the Petro Pavlos. So you're gonna see me hold my back turrets towards that Petro Pavlos. You can see them, the turrets wiggling back and forth as I have my mouse cursor on the left or right side of the ship in the front there. And I'm doing that specifically so when that Petro Pavlos pushes out broadside, I can kill him. Because he's low health and he'll be broadside. And that's something you can do to kind of micromanage your ship a little bit. Um, it's a little bit tricky to do, but... Um, with turrets that are this fast, it probably doesn't matter that much, but... Um, in ships like Yamato, let's say, it can it can be pretty important to keep your turrets on target. Um, unfortunately, we ate some torps, and, well, Holland HE is kind of insane. Deals a ton of damage, lots of fires. It's... I don't know. It, they kind of can get away with things for free, so... And there we go. Holland, or the Petro pops out, full broadside, and takes zero damage. Um, we do get a Kraken on the detonating Holland, <laughs> which, let's be clear, I'm happy the Holland died, but I'm not happy about the detonation mechanic. But So that's kind of how I play pushing and holding flanks. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a good day.